I do believe that it's time to begin our midweek service. Uh, it's Wednesday night. We thank God for his faithfulness. We thank God for the privilege and the honor of being back in the house of the Lord. And uh, it's good to be in the state of Pennsylvania. It really is. God is so good to us. God's been faithful and and uh, he's, he's been keeping his word. And, and, and no matter what people do, God is faithful. And so we're thankful yes. that we can lean and depend upon God. Yes. And with that, let us all stand. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Let's seek his face. Let's look to him this evening. Lord, we're looking to you. We're depending upon you. Asking that you bless this service. Let it all go to the furtherance of the gospel. I pray that lives are touched and hearts are touched. God, that we pray that you bless those in all lives. I pray, God, that every need is met. God, that you touch, heal, deliver, set free. God, I pray that prayers are answered, that hearts are touched. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name we pray. Remain standing as Reverend Steele leads us in the song. Turn in your hymnal if you like to page 254. Everybody will be happy over there. Page 254.
desire your prayers that you will continue to pray for us, the church, the city, our state, amen, and pray for those in power, amen. The Bible encourages us to pray for those that are in authority, amen, and um, you know, we should even pray for our bosses on the job, things like that. Pray for people, amen. amen. You never know uh, what a person is experiencing. Your prayer may be the very thing that can uplift them yes, sir. Uh, in one way or the other. So it's a blessing to, to pray for people. One of the highest honors that you could ever bestow upon another human being is the fact of praying for them. Yes. Because think if you are literally talking to the creator and asking the creator of this universe to do something for us on their behalf. Amen. That's an high honor. Yes, it really is. Yes. And it's a blessing. And it really is a blessing to pray for people. Yes, sir. And to care for others. Because praying for people does something for you mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Yes. It causes you to care for them and love them. And I notice that because each day I spend time praying for our leaders, our other brothers and sisters out in the field laboring and, and uh, just uh, the church members. And it does something for you spiritually. Yes, it does something yes. for you. The fact that you pray for people, it opens things up in your life uh, for you to love and care for people and to see people. And, and, and one of the things that I have found, and this is not something you do all the time when you see people. There's times I see brothers and sisters at conference, and I'll be at, and, and it's good to be able to say I've been praying for you, yes, sir. Yeah. and be honest about it. Yeah. You know, not to to just pull their name, but it's a blessing. I remember, um, uh, and I'm just sharing this. Please don't take this the wrong way. But our brother, our pastor in Panama, our pastor in Panama, I saw him. I think it's Reverend. Dr. Anyway, uh, I saw him at conference a while, uh, a year or two ago, whenever it was, and we don't really know each other as well as maybe some of the others, but I went up to him, shook his hands, greeted him, said, how you doing, brother? I just want you to know we've been praying for you. We've been praying. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me, he, he was surprised, amen, because we, we, we might not know each other as well as maybe he might know some other because our organization so big sometimes you know others more than you do another but just the fact that you tell somebody that you're praying for them it, it meant you could tell it really meant a lot to him amen and so it's a blessing to pray for people yes amen and um, one of the things that like if, if i'm talking to pastor olson our pastor uh, many times not just one time but many times and him being in the position that he is, one of the things he'll say a lot of times, pray for us, please. Pray for us, please. And, and, and uh, it's just, a, it's amazing how a man can be that humble yes. to say, pray for us, please. Yes, sir. Amen. So Amen. it's a blessing to pray for people. So pray for us, please. Amen. And uh, God is faithful. Yes, and we are praying for you. Amen. 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 We'll receive the tithes and offering uh, a little later. I don't want you to think I've forgotten about it, but uh, all Christians do pay tithes and give an offering. Amen. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a blessing. That's another thing. It's a blessing to give. Yes, sir. And um, be faithful to God. And uh, not to be, uh, not to have to put George on respirators. You know, because he can't breathe. <laughs> some, some people so tight and have to put George on respirators. But anyway, um, I'd like to minister to you from the book of Hebrews tonight. One of my favorite books, one of my most favorite books, Bible books, book of Hebrews. I mean, we 
y'all, you know, we would say the whole Bible is a blessing. We're not saying the other books of the Bible are not, are not a blessing. But the book of Hebrews is one of my most favorite books in the, uh, in the Bible. Because it talks about, it compares Jesus to others in the Old Testament because, you know, the Old Testament was set up to prepare us for him coming. And it talks about how much better he is than the, the, the high priest and, the, and Moses and Abraham and on and on and on. It's really a blessing. Yes, but a, a better way. Jesus is the way. Amen. Amen. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, by him. Thank God. Thank God. I'm so glad tonight that I'm saved. And I'm saved that if I was to die right now, I'd be ready to see Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 9 and just one verse, verse 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. And you know, and, and, and to think that all these years, people have wondered what happens to people after they die. The nerve of us to ask that. Oh, I wonder what happens to people. Where do we go after you die? The Bible gives us a clear answer to what happens when we die. There's a lot of answers in the Bible to questions that we have. But so many people want to focus on questions that you may not have the answer to. We don't have all the answers. But the answers you need are in the Bible. Amen. Can I get a witness? Deuteronomy 29 and 29 says the secret things belong to God. So while you're focusing on whether uh, Adam had a belly button or not and all that, you need to be focusing on where we're going to spend eternity or whether or not we're right with God. Why is it that people always want to know about revelation and uh, all these questions about the mark of the beast and, and all these things. How come we don't ask about the cross? Amen. Yes. How come we don't ask about the blood of Jesus? Amen. How come we don't ask about grace and forgiveness and mercy? Yes. Yes. Always want to know about things that we may not know the answer to. Why not? Learn about the things we do have the answers to. Yes, sir. Can I get a witness? Amen. 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 And as it is appointed unto men once to die. And then what did the Bible say? What's going to happen to us? But after this, there's your answer. But after this, the judgment. When you stand in judgment, that means that there's going to be, we have to give an account. That means we have to answer for the life that we live. There's an old saying, and then we're going to pray. What you sow in time, you will wear in eternity. What you sow in time, we will wear in eternity. 
eternity to remember a lifetime. Amen. That's not our title, but I just slipped that in there. It was free. It was an added bonus. All right? Let us pray. Brother Michael, will you stand and pray and ask God's blessing, brother, upon the message and the messenger? Thank you, brother. Heavenly Father, thanks, Pastor, and Someday, someday, and this is not just something I'm saying. Someday, there will come a time, Brother Michael, that that will be you. That's say with someone standing. God answers prayer. Yes, amen. God is still calling men and women. Yes, hallelujah. God is still. I know we're in a pandemic, but God is still calling men and women. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Souls still need to be saved. God is concerned. Yes. People are falling by the wayside. People are allowing this present day situation to distract and deter them to get your eye off the ball, so to speak. To lose sight of the reality of God. We may be in a pandemic, but we're still going to answer to God. That's right. We're going to answer to God. Yes, sir. And this will not be an excuse. Well, the coronavirus was going on, God, and I just kind of laid back, and I just kind of stayed in the shadows, and I just stayed at home. I was afraid. I was scared. The Bible tells us that God has not given us the spirit of fear. Amen. He didn't say for us to be foolish. We're not talking about foolishness. Amen. I was talking with a cousin of mine today. He doesn't go to church and all that. But he said, I still just live my life. If I die, I die. But I'm not going to quit living my life. Amen. But I'd like to take that scripture and might not be a whirlwind type message. I might not run around screaming and hollering. And I might not use words like a college professor this evening. Uh, but I like to preach from this scripture tonight. It's a message that I, I, uh, I think I got it at work. There was one note that I put put together a little bit at a time. I, every time God would give me something, I would add to it and on my notes. And while I was on my lunch break today, God gave it to me. God gave it to me. As it is appointed unto me, once to die. Help us, Jesus. But after this, after this, the judgment. I'm preaching on a date with death. A date with death. The preacher, I, I want to go on a date. That's one. It's nothing wrong with going on. But there is a date that we all will go on. All right? As it is appointed unto men. The word appointed is very significant in this biblical rendition. In this biblical text. 
anointed is the in the Greek as to be reserved. To be reserved. And the best way to explain this so that we can grasp the seriousness of this, to grasp the gist of what I am trying to convey to you and really to myself, is that we have reservations. We have reservations that have been set up by God. He's the only one that knows the date. Oh, slip your hands up right now. I, I, this thing is, it's been heavy on my heart since this afternoon. Hallelujah. I want you to really tune in tonight. Those of you that are watching online, I want you to just tune in. I want you to get locked in. I want you to focus. Hallelujah. There may be a lot going on. There may be different issues going on. But we need to discuss this day that we all have to go on. We need to discuss these reservations that have been made by God. And I was thinking about how that we had to, people ask you, we're getting ready to fly and we're going to conference. Did you make your reservations yet? Once we learn the date, Brother Steele, then we can make the reservations, right? You don't make reservations if you don't know the date. Can I get a witness? Sometimes we might want to go on a dinner engagement, whether it be uh, February the 14th with someone that we do or someone we're dating or interested in, whatever, we may reserve a place in the restaurant. Or if we want to drive somewhere, either from where we are or after we get off of a flight, we may reserve a car. And in these reservations, there is a date involved. There's money involved. And plans and all these things. But that's something we do. That's something we put together. But God has put reservations together that we don't know anything about as such, except the fact that we have reservations. For it has been appointed, it has been reserved. God has reserved a date with death. We all have an appointment and a time that has been reserved by God, a date with death. It's going to happen. It's just that we don't know when, we don't know where, and we don't know how. But we know if we live long enough, it's going to happen. The word death is very interesting. Death is very interesting because we know the word death is simply separation from life. When we are separated from this life into the next. And because death is sometimes tragic, death is sometimes devastating, Death is very staggering to the mind to be here one minute and gone the next. And as I shared the other day, my dad's been dead almost 20-something years. 
and I'm and it still staggers my mind that he's gone. And it, it, it's, it's because death, because he was here, and one phone call, he was gone. And it's staggering to the mind. It's hard to process at times. We tend to spin it, so to speak, with various cliches because death is so difficult to deal with many times. So we have different ways that we describe it or we associate with it so that we can deal with it. So a lot of times people say it's the rap, or they may say it's curtains, or they may say I believe that's all folks, or, or people may say somebody was deep six, or someone made their transition, right? Or we may say someone expired, or pushing up daisies, or somebody slipped away, or someone succumbed, uh, or we may say somebody cashed in their chips, or kicked the bucket, or whatever the case may be. But there's all kinds of ways that this thing is described, or we, we, we try to find ways to deal with it because death is so devastating and staggering to our lives sometimes. The fact that this happens and no one ever thinks it's going to be them. We always think it's going to be the next person. We, we, we think it's going to be the next person. And so in an attempt to stop the inevitable, in an attempt to stop this inevit inevitability or to postpone this reality, we do a lot of things. Are you with me? I told you what it's going to be. We're going to have to, you know, let's just soak some things up tonight. Let's just let God deal with us. Let's just let God talk to us. Let's just face reality. It ain't all about screaming and hollering and, 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 and jumping and, 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 and all that. Sometimes it's good to be cerebral. Sometimes it's good to have thoughts and concrete thoughts and whatnot. But anyway, so to postpone this reality, to hinder or stop this inevitability, or inevitability rather, we do a lot of things. We'll exercise. Well, I gotta exercise. And, no, we're not criticizing these things. We just tell them. We eat better. We'll go to the doctor like we're supposed to. If the doctor prescribed medicine, we'll take the medicine and keep up with it like we should. We, we may uh, get alarm systems in our houses so that people don't come in on us unexpectedly because we don't want to be killed. Before we think we, uh, we don't want to die before we think we should die. And, 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 and uh, we may buy a gun for protection. And such like. And even with this coronavirus. Now people are all up in arms. What's the elephant in the room? Because people are afraid they might get it and die. They're afraid that if I get the coronavirus, they make it sound so terrible. They make it sound so bad. They make it sound like millions and millions of Americans are getting this. And when really it's not, I mean, we're not, we're sad for them to die from this thing. But it's really not killing as many people as you think. And, but anyway, we don't want to get involved in that. But nevertheless, the Bible says it has been appointed on a man once to die, and after this, the judgment, the judgment. We all have reservations to die. We all have reservations 
to die. The problem is that we don't know when, we don't know where, we don't know how. We don't know our own, we don't know the extent of our mortality. We don't know the extent because we don't know. That's why we need to make sure tonight, are you with me? That's why we need to make sure tonight that we are prepared and that we have our business fixed with God and that we are ready to go into eternity. We are ready to meet God and that, you know what, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to allow death to control our life. We can just be prepared to meet it tonight because of being where we need to be, doing what we're supposed to do, having that relationship with God because we know it's going to happen. Then we need to be prepared and we need to be ready. Job asked a question concerning a date with death. If a man die, Job chapter 14, verse 14. If a man die, shall he live again? If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. You know you're going to live again. We know that. But the question is, where will you live again? We know we're going to live again. We know this is not it. We know we got to stand before God. The Bible tells us that we got to stand before God. So it's not, the question is not whether or not we will live again. So Job, the answer to your question is, yes, we will live again. But the real question is, where will you live? Where will you spend eternity? Where will you spend forever and ever and ever? Will it be heaven or hell? Will it be smoking or non-smoking? Whatever the case may be, whatever you want to call it, it's still heaven or hell tonight. First Samuel chapter 20 and verse 3. We know that David was running from Saul because Saul was in a jealous rage because he knew that David was getting ready to be king. And it was inevitable that it was over for him. And so he figured that if he could just kill David or destroy David, that it would stop God's plan. It would stop what God wanted. And all these things. You know, you being jealous of another person is not going to stop the plan of God. No, sir. Are you with me? Yes. Ooh, Ooh, Jesus. God. You being envious of another person is not going to stop God's plan. You trying to hurt them and damage them and gossip about them and tear their name down and scandalize them or, or being mean and evil and narrow-minded and low down. Uh, it's not going to stop the plan of God tonight. Uh, it did not stop the plan of God uh, because David still uh, became king. Uh, but when it was all said and done, uh, it was Saul uh, that died. A date with them. First Samuel 23 says, And David swore moreover and said, Thy father knoweth that I have found grace in thine eyes. You see, God had provided David with assistance. Mm -hmm. You know, people may be doing you wrong, and you may feel like you're in a bad situation. 
But God always provides somewhere. He always works something out in the situation, no matter how bad it is, no matter how negative it may appear, no matter how unfair you feel like you're being treated, no matter how unfortunate you feel like you're in a situation this way and that way, if you just stay faithful, if you just keep staying loyal, if you keep your testimony up, if you just keep on doing what God wants you to do, he'll set something up for you. He'll put a positive situation up in a negative situation. Somebody said amen. I didn't mean to get excited tonight, but I'm Thy father certainly knoweth that I have found grace in thine eyes. You see, Jonathan was looking out for David. Mm -hmm. And God kept blessing David. He was always one step ahead. Mm -hmm. You see, people think they're slick. Mm -hmm. And people think you can't outsmart God. <laughs> you can't outsmart God. When a man waits, please God, he will even make his enemies. This man had the same blood. Uh, uh, but when God's involved, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with it. Uh, when a man's ways please God, he will even make his enemies uh, be at peace with him. Yes, sir. Amen. Are you with me? Yes, sir. The Bible said, fret not thyself because of evil doers. Neither uh, Psalm 37, against the workers of iniquity. Yes. But they shall soon be cut down like the green grass and the green herb. I'm telling you tonight, just stay faithful. Keep doing what's right. Don't cave in to the temptation of retaliation. Don't cave in to the temptation of doing evil for evil. Don't give in to the emotion of anger. Don't give in to the emotion of oh, I'm going to make them pay because God's intentions is mine. And I will repay. And he said, let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, there's but a step between me and death. David was like, you don't understand. <laughs> if I slip up somewhere, it's over for me. Because David, uh, Saul is trying to kill me. Um, I'm reminded of, uh, and I don't know how much more of this I'll be able to share tonight. You know you have a David here. You know whether or not you you know whether or not your sins have been forgiven. You know whether or not you are a Christian or not. You know whether or not you've made things right between you and God. Before I share this, I read a quote. It says, death is not extinguishing the light from the Christian. When you die, it's not about death extinguishing light from you. It is putting out the lamp because the dawn has come. Uh, yeah, the lights may go out in here, but it's going to but but the lights going to come on in eternity. Yes, Are you with me? Yes. <laughs> death may turn the light. She had been on drugs all her life. She had been in the streets. She had been in prison. And her life was just a mess. She walked in and she wasn't 
she was about as short, she was short, and she was a little pissed. Yeah. And she would drive around, and, and my, my wife and I, and sometimes the girls, they would see her, and she'd be, Ooh, she'd be flying. She was just real hyper. But she came into the church, and God began to deal with her. And she prayed, and got her life right with God. She started bringing other people. She brought other people. She was always stopping and buying stuff and wanting to try to do stuff on her girls. And she'd stop by the house and call. We stayed right across from the church, whatever. But anyway, time went on. Um, we, uh, it was a Sunday morning. It was a Sunday morning. And, uh, and I think it may have been the last service. Mm -hmm. It was the last service that she was at. It was strange. She came in and she said, after service, Reverend Sister Woods, can I take a picture with you? And she never did that. She was, it was just a very strange. She said, can I take a picture with you? And I uh, said, okay, that's fine. We just do it after service and wait for, you know, because you know, we got to greet and talk to people and all this. And that was fine. And service was over with. And it took a while. Because my wife and I, we, God had blessed, we had people, we were talking with people and ministering and, you know, doing counsel and all these things. You know how you talk to people standing at the back door and say bye to people and people talk to you real quick about things and all that. And she did, so I never seen, she went over to the pew and up front and just sat down. She had her camera. It was one of those digital cameras. I'll never forget that's when digital cameras was coming into real prominence. And, and she just sat there. And I was like, well, that's kind of strange, but whatever. And um, so finally everything began to thin out. And uh, I don't even remember who we got to take the picture. But anyway, somebody one made one of the girls took it. No, no, it was somebody else took it. It was the Anyway, so I guess the girl was in the picture too. It's been a while since we looked at it. But anyway, she waited and somebody took the picture. It may have been, oh, you know, it may have been the worker. The worker may have taken it. But then Brother Layman with us took it. And um, so I remember we were standing in front of the pulpit and we took the picture. But you know, you, you know how you do something sometimes, it's like, but anyway, you just do it and just, okay, whatever it means, whatever. And um, so she didn't make it back that Sunday night. And um, and she got sick and went into a coma. She got sick and went into a coma. And sometime during that week, It was just the strangest thing. She never got the picture with them. So I was up preaching and the police came in and, was, and then they sat them down, say I was needed down at the house or whatever. So when I got done, I went down there, my wife and I. And her daughter, who, who had come in from Texas, had come in and she said, um, I was going through mom's county, and there's a, this picture, this picture that was never developed. And her daughter developed that picture and gave it to me. But she took that picture and never developed it because she didn't have a chance. Because she had a date. Her plans was to probably go have it develop, put it in a frame, put it up in the house. But she had a date. She had reservations that God had set up. It never happened. It never happened. I'm telling you, it's time 
It's time to do what's right. It's time to do what's right. For as, as it is appointed unto me once to die. But after this, the judgment, a date with death. Let's say, Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you tonight for this service. We thank you for those that are watching online. We pray, God, that your will will be accomplished in this service. Talk to us. Deal with us. Make this real to us. Don't let yourself get so busy that you can't think about this reality. Don't let yourself get so caught up in life that you forget that we've got to answer to God for every deed done in our bodies. Oh, Father, I thank you. I praise you. I praise you. I thank you. Help us, Jesus. Help us, God, to make sure that in this service, this night, make sure one of our precious brothers that I went to Bible school with, when we was in Bible school, as we begin to take some time to pray and, and lean toward an altar call, one of our precious brothers that I went to school with preached on the message entitled, God's Last Altar Call. You just don't know. You just don't know. That was Sister Linda's last altar call that Sunday. That Sunday, yes, she took a picture, but it was the last time she got to come to the altar. Tonight could be it, a day with death. Reservations have been set up. You don't know when, you don't know where, you don't know how. But you'll be there. You and God, you'll be there. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. I praise you, God, for forgiveness of sin, for repentance, for being able to know that we're right with God. Are you ready? Have you done that? Have you looked over your life? God, I thank you and I praise you. Hallelujah.